Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Today, we are going to talk about this extremely weird CMU 800 from Roland. Before we get into the sonic part of this, let me actually show you what it is. It is a sound module that was made to be sequenced by a computer. So uh, you have a melody channel, which is monophonic analog synthesizer with no timbral capabilities. It's just a very crude envelope generator. A bass, very crude as well with an envelope generator. Chord, that is a four voice polyphonic synth that sounds super cheap to you. It's basically the same sound than the melody channel. And a drum machine that is very similar sounding than the TR606. Here there's a master control for this mixer. On the back, you can see here that we have a mix out, individual outs as well. Plug in and out. I'm not sure if it's working on this unit. And it was also meant to be a CV interface for your computer. So. This on the back is the connection for the computer. So you would connect it to an Apple II or I don't know which other type of uh, computer there was at the time that were compatible. But anyway, you could send sequences via a program to the internal sound and then use also convert this to CV to control any classic CV gate synthesizer from the time. This unit has been modified and someone added this to it which is a MIDI interface that connects to the SCSI port on the back. It has its own power supply, a MIDI in, and it didn't sync out. There's a little red LED to show you the MIDI clock that you're sending and a MIDI activity LED. There's also this little reset button that lets you cancel all messages. I, I had to use it quite a lot. It's a bit buggy because sometimes I get messages get scrambled. And, but anyway, it works, as you will see. I had made a video about the CMU810, which is an analog synthesizer that was supposed to connect via CV gate with this. And uh, Alex Paul was kind enough to give us an history lesson, which I will edit a little bit for those who haven't seen the video, so you can understand a bit where those things come from. And if you want to go watch that video, I'll leave the link in the description. Sequencing could be handled on a computer, but not sound production. That was another step beyond. Roland spotted a gap in the market for standalone sound modules with SCSI ports and ribbon cables that could be connected up to your computer to replay the sounds that you sequence. And so under their Amdec brand, they launched the Compu Music series with the CMU 800. And that was also the first ever multi-timbral desktop unit. It had drums, it had bass, it had chords and it had melody. You find those modules badged as Amdec, Roland DG, or just Roland, but they're all the same thing made by the same people. Okay, so let's check the sound of this CMU 800 in a basic way, just using a keyboard. So right now, I think I'm on channel one, which is the melody one. So I can already hear that this quite a bit of a okay so this is quite simple sound sustain seems to be more of a release thing Those two parameters does change the sound just a tiny bit. Now let's go to channel two, which is the bass. This one might be the simplest sound. I mean, 
test nothing more than this. But I do find it sounds horrible in the... You can hear the bleed. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have much interest, but I do find it still has some kind of uh, nice big low hand. Now, now, this is the tricky part of the way the MIDI device work, is that now, you see, I can play monophonically one voice of the four voices from the chord module. Yeah, it's pretty much the same sound than the melody one. If I wanted to use chords, I think it's MIDI channel 9. Yes, that allows me to play polyphonic, uh, which could be fun. Maybe we could play, for example... Especially using something like the... Kids step 37, you can do some funny stuff like this. Okay, so now let's check the drums. This is why I grabbed the tracker so I could sequence it. The drums are not really interesting to check with a keyboard. So I also added that little thing that I'm not using very often but can be handy just to get rid of the noise. And also it stays in the family and it, it, they go well together. Anyway, here are the drums. These sounds very close to a TR-606. I think it's the same circuit. Yeah, I just have some kicks and some toms and snares. Now let's add some hi-hats. The open hi-hats is ear-crushing. And there's a cymbal. I've made a few patterns to demonstrate a few things. So this is a simple sequence on channel one here. The guy who made the MIDI interface added a few controls that were available on the software. So we have some pitch band modulations and uh, some CCs available. So I've made a few a little riff with this. Even more cheap to me. Okay, so here is a little jam with basically everything in use. We'll start with just uh, uh, part of the drums and the bass. We'll add some stuff and move around to a few other patterns that complete it. So this is going to be really the sound of this machine straight out of the box, but with a composition that goes with it. of the final pass. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to summon friends to go with it because as you might have seen it has CV and gate outs behind it. I've talked about it in the intro. Each of this channel plus two more can connect to modular gear, which was, I guess, supposed to go with your uh, Roland System 100 Hem or any other CV instrument that Roland put out at the time. And it happens that I still have with me here the CMU 810. So we are going to hook it up, 
first I want to try with the bass. So I'm going to take the CVN gate out from the bass channel and send them to control this guy. So this should now work. Let's cut the volume here. We have the bass. That's good. Ooh, magic. So we now have... Mmm, that's tasty. This... Let's make it very short, but well acidish stuff with this. Ooh, that's good. They, they go well together. So we can have a friend to help around. Just to see. We have this one. Let's try this one instead. Instead of doing this, I'm going to remove this guy and I'm going to take as much Roland sounding filter that I can find in my Eurac stuff. I'm going to plug the individual out of the sounds that, I'm, that I have here and try to control them via the two CV outs that I'm not using. Okay, well, I just made things very, very noisy, even more than it was before. But uh, when the thing is actually playing, it's not that bad. I mean, it even sort of add to the super vintage character of things. So what I've added now is this basically. So we have the melody channel going into this filter and the chords into this one. So what I'm going to do is to use one of the gate out to advance this sequencer and modulate one of the filter. This is going to modulate. I've also panned both left right, give a bit of more stereo. Let's try something. Let's use MIDI channel 8 because it has Podomento. I'm just going to put on some random notes. When there is no stuff playing from the chord, we will see. So we still have our melody. We have some stuff happening here. CB out. Mud. Yeah. Does work pretty well. Yeah, if we if you go Portamento, it will turn it into more of an NFO. Oh, that's awesome. Let's go band pass. Oh yeah. See, when it's all in use, the noise and buzz and stuff almost go well together. And uh, I have, have rooted the base of this to the mixer of the CompuSynth, so they, they're both there. Now I'm just going to add some spring reverb and modulated delays to 
everything. Let's go I pass just to try. And this one in 12 two pole mode. Oh boy, too much resonance. Ooh. This is all well tasty. Less chip to need already. But it's still very, very, very noisy. Okay, here we go for the final jam pattern on this setup. I'm going to run you down to what I've done while unmuting the tracks. So I've cheated a little bit. And I. made a sample chain of drums from this guy so I could have like reverse them, pitch them, repeat them from the tracker. And I have the the original drums playing going to a spring reverb. Now same patch as before this is the bass sending CV to this. So I have the bass doing like the, just the meaty sub part and the 810 doing it more acid-ish. And when you combine the two, you get that little chorusy tune stuff that is just, well, good. This is the melody channel, just going to an EQ, I mean to my, the EQ of my um, recording console and to a modulated BVD delay. Now the same thing, I've used the chord FX to only play those once in a while. I'm taking the mix out with those two actually. So it's also going to the same delay. I'm using channel, I think it's channel 6 to play the 6th voice individually, apart from the chord here. So I have the chord playing and sometimes just this on top. Fun thing. So now I've used channel 8 to control the 810 prototype from System AD. And bonus, we make this one louder. On channel 7, I've programmed a few notes that I've sent the CV to the filter here. So it's just basically doing modulations. I can just mute or unmute them whenever I want. All these together. Make a nice mess of uh, blurpy, bleepy things. I like it. This is going to be the end of this video. Hope you had fun watching. 
and that uh, might inspire you to do some stuff. It's not because you have stuff that sounds weird and noisy that you can't use them. Just a little icing on the cake and one more info about this. I haven't really shown the MIDI converter that connects to the SCSI port behind. So you have to power it and then you have your MIDI. And bonus, there is a din sync out that will convert your MIDI clock to din sync. So you can sync up old roll and drum machines. And uh, it, this is a method of sync that I prefer amongst most of the others. I find it just to be extremely reliable, even though here it's converted from MIDI, which is not always reliable. Anyway, let's check if it works. And it's a, an excuse for another jam. <laughs> make a simple packet of this, give you the drum thing, some sounds from this, uh, probably some samples from filters, and uh, some jams for Patreon. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks to Lenis2 to have sent me this broad thing, thanks to my friend Ongvark for this, thanks to Alex Paul who talked in the video of this one, which I left the link already, but if you want more stories about this, you should definitely watch this one as well. Uh, that's it. See you next time. Hello, I'm back from Rome, from Belgium. And Julian asked me a few questions about the CME 800. I was looking for a MIDI to CV gate interface that can handle polyphonic playing. My first 
on the list was an MPU 101 but a friend of mine uh, Graham Bruce was using a CMU 800 for mainly his drums and he had two of his devices uh, one he wanted to sell to me so I buy it the MIDI interface uh, was already included so I uh, don't have to search for anything how to convert the thing for MIDI it was already there I uh, looked up some things about it it's from a Japanese guy and I think he still sells these uh, units uh, MIDI interfaces The first uh, hours with the CMU where I was trying to make tunes with the sounds uh, I really liked it through effects it's a basic sound uh, you have only a few things you can adjust and I realized it, it's throwing you back to uh, music composing and not all the fancy knobs, modulations, filters uh, if you want to make a good track with, with that CMU 800 you need to know how to compose to make it interesting otherwise it will just sound like uh, a simple tune you hear in stores at the background so I really I am uh, I like the old stuff and uh, Less is more is a thing that it's always in my mind. Less is always more. So I thought, hey, why why not uh, make an album or an EP with it uh, and send the unit to all different people around the world to make a big collab and uh, a big compilation of all artists making things with that easy machine uh, nothing more uh, now all people make music uh, and it must sound freaky and, and, uh, and nice sounds but uh, I think uh, if you can make it uh, good with, with this unit that's an, another kind of art or something <laughs> So now uh, Julian has the CMU and he's gonna make a track with it. I made uh, three, three tracks uh, already with the unit. After uh, this it's going to nearby Amsterdam to uh, Maka Monka, Monkey Radio. Uh, you can find some tunes from him on YouTube. Uh, and Graham uh, will make uh, a tune too and I have another few people in mind I don't know about the release date yet I think it's going to be over a couple of years or something when it's done it's done so there's no stress or uh, deadline or anything 